Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, June 19th, 2020. I pray that our time together in God's word today is a blessing to you as we all grow together in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus as our Savior. We begin, this, or we begin today with a reading from Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, Lord, because I am in distress. My eyes are worn out from frustration, my whole being as well. Indeed, my life is consumed with grief and my years with groaning. My strength has failed because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. The course of my life is in your power. Rescue me from the power of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Lord, do not let me be disgraced when I call on you. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them be quiet in Sheol. Let lying lips that arrogantly speak against the righteous in proud contempt be silenced. How great is your goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you. In the presence of everyone, you have acted for those who take refuge in you. We continue reading from the Proverbs of Solomon and then move on to other wise sayings that God inspired uh, King Solomon to write down for our learning. A good name is to be chosen over great wealth. Favor is better than silver and gold. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord makes them all. A sensible person sees danger and takes cover, but the inexperienced keep going and are punished. Humility, the fear of the Lord, results in wealth, honor, and life. There are thorns and snares on the way of the crooked. The one who guards himself stays far from them. Start a youth out on his way. Even when he grows old, he will not depart from it. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. The one who sows injustice will reap disaster, and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. A generous person will be blessed, for he shares his food with the poor. Drive out a mocker, and conflict goes too. Then quarreling and dishonor will cease. The one who loves a pure heart and gracious lips, the king is his friend. The Lord's eyes keep watch over knowledge, but he overthrows the words of the treacherous. The slacker says, there's a lion outside. I'll be killed in the public square. The mouth of the forbidden woman is a deep pit. A man cursed by the Lord will fall into it. Foolishness is bound to the heart of a youth. A rod of discipline will separate it from him. Oppressing the poor to enrich oneself and giving to the rich, both lead only to poverty. Listen closely. Pay attention to the words of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge. For it is pleasing if you keep them with you and are, if they are constantly on your lips. I have instructed you today, even you, so that your confidence may be in the Lord. Haven't I written you 30 sayings about counsel and knowledge in order to teach you true and reliable words so that you may give a dependable report to those who sent you? We now move out of Jesus' many discourses with his disciples on that Thursday evening into the events of Jesus' uh, a re a betrayal and arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. After Jesus had said these things, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas took a company of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees and came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing everything that was about to happen to him, went out and said to them, Who is it you are seeking? Jesus of Nazareth, they, re they answered. I am he, Jesus told them. Judas, who betrayed him, was also standing with them. When Jesus told them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, who is it that you're seeking? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. 
I told you, I am he, Jesus replied. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the words, I have not lost one of those you have given me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. At that time, Jesus said to Peter, put your sword away. Am I not to drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the company of soldiers, the commander, and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus and tied him up. First, they led him to Annas, since he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be better for one man to die for the people. How does God work in our hearts? Today in our theological writing, Martin Luther talks about how God the Holy Spirit works in our hearts through his word and through the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Now when God sends forth his holy gospel, he deals with us in a twofold manner, first outwardly, then inwardly. Outwardly, he deals with us through the oral word of the gospel and through material signs, that is, baptism and the sacrament of the altar. Inwardly, he deals with us through the Holy Spirit, faith, and other gifts. But whatever their measure or order, the outward factors should and must precede. The inward experience follows and is effected by the outward. God has determined to give the inward to no one except through the outward. For he wants to give no one the spirit or faith outside of the word and sign instituted by him, as he says in Luke chapter 16, let them hear Moses and the prophets. Accordingly, Paul can call baptism a washing of regeneration, wherein God richly pours out the Holy Spirit. And the oral gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith. Observe carefully, my brother, this order, for everything depends on it. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, O Love, How Deep. For us, by wickedness betrayed, for us, in crown of thorns arrayed, he bore the shameful cross and death, for us, he gave his dying breath. And we pray, Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time in God's word with me today. I just wanted to let you all know that tomorrow, Saturday, June 20th, uh, will be our last devotion for a little bit. So we're going to be going on a little bit of a hiatus uh, while I move my daughter down to uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, after tomorrow, we'll be taking two weeks off and then resuming with our daily devotions on Sunday, July 5th. So I uh, just want to let you all know about that, but I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow and God's richest blessings on your day today.